My name is Taryn Johnston. I'm the founder of Henoch Survival Nonprofit Organization. We're working together in community or common unity because the, the river unites us all as a collective to revive, heal and restore the Henox River. In the first two years, Henox Revival has removed almost one and a half million kilograms of trash and over 65,000 bags of waste with the help of 3,000 volunteers. And just to give you an indication of what we're dealing with and what we're doing, I'd like to take you on a tour of the Henops to show you a few of the realities that we're faced with. Yeah, so if you look at where the Henops River starts, it starts in the East Rand in Kempton Park and then it meanders through, there's a lot, hundreds of tributaries that, that join into the Carl Spreit and uh, it winds its way through into Tembisa where we're obviously dealing with a lot of poverty issues, service delivery issues, and uh, general waste disposal issues. People do not have dustbins, and they end up throwing their waste into rivers just to get rid of it, because when the rains come, it washes away all the rubbish, which obviously ends up where we are. There's also a lot of problems with uh, infrastructure damage, and stormwater drains are blocked, the water channels are being used as waste bins and uh, all this obviously as soon as there's rain just washes down into the rivers and then you know of course it makes its way down to us in Centurion. Another issue that we're dealing with is that there's a lot of, a lot of informal trading and um, people selling fruit and vegetable on the side of the roads obviously they packaging goes into the river and all the um, organic waste gets tossed into the river once it's not sellable anymore. The next reality we're faced with is the destruction of our wetlands. So our wetlands are being turned into wastelands. People are illegally dumping any and everything in our wetlands and our wetlands are unable to absorb the amount of water that they would ordinarily. Um, there's also another issue where people are developing on the wetlands. So we are faced with more water entering the stormwater channels because there's more cement and less absorption. We have people that are building toilets which flush directly into the waterways. And so we, we're dealing with raw sewage that's coming straight from people's toilets into the, the wetlands and into the, the rivers. Further down the river, we move into industry. So you have all your industrial effluent, discharges, and um, I, I, I think a lot of it is non-compliant that is being discharged into the river. We've seen black oil being pumped into the wetlands and into the river, really polluting from, from industry side, which is another problem that we're faced with. And, uh, you know, industry needs to comply. Uh, we. I think we have a problem with law enforcement in this country because we have the perfect laws in place, they're just not enforced and everybody's just getting away with doing what they're doing because there's nobody chasing them down to try and put an end to it. The next reality that we're faced with is the malfunctioning of our wastewater treatment works. We've got, this is a countrywide problem. But our wastewater treatment works are polluting our rivers in ways that I cannot even explain. Uh, it's, it's really tragic and uh, something needs to be done. We are faced with raw sewage in, in our rivers, toxic to the ecosystem, and uh, there seems to be no consequences. So there's, there's a lot of work that needs to be done and a lot of enforcement that needs to take place, as well as remediation plans and um, we, need, we need to move forward with this, we need progression. The wastewater treatment works cannot be allowed to continue the way that they are. So we're also faced with the informal recycling reality and this is an issue on all our rivers I think because these people are generally homeless and uh, they migrate towards rivers as a place where they can clean their stock that they pull out of our dustbins because we are not washing and separating 
are recyclables. And so the, the informal pickers have to take the stock that they collect from our bins and go and wash it so they can get a higher value when they sell it. And um, so this is an, a call out to you to separate your recyclables at home before putting it out with your general waste just to save our rivers. You know, often enough these people are on riverbanks and it's dangerous in terms of, you know, when it, when it floods, they, 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 their whole community can be washed away. Of course it's informal, it's not structured. So we're dealing with a, what looks like a massive mess, but there's a gaping hole in our system. We, we don't provide recycling facilities. Um, you know, in our country, you have to privatize. It's it, you know something that you need to, a service that you need to pay for extra if you want to do the right thing. You know, and that also has to change. So what we're doing is we're actually working with people who we found on the riverbanks and creating jobs, so that we can alle alleviate poverty and uplift the community. So we literally get into the river, we clean, we remove all the plastic and all the household waste that we can from the trees, from the root systems. We'll take out fallen trees and branches and, and remove blockages from the river so that the water can still continue to flow smoothly and reduce the risk of flooding. So we promote active citizenry because we believe that active citizens help municipalities to function better. Um, we host community cleanups periodically, so we're on a month-to-month -month basis where volunteers can come from the community and actually get their hands dirty and we make it a lot of fun. We have DJs and lunches and we really we bring out the best in people and they can you know they get they walk away with a sense of pride and a sense of purpose because they've actually given back. So it's a really feel good exercise and it also creates a lot of awareness around the activities that we do. We've also explored with citizen science and uh, that's using mini SAS tools and um, basic water chemistry testing so that we can determine the health of the rivers and also engaging with the communities so that they can get a better understanding of what a healthy river actually is because a lot of people don't even know what it is anymore <laughs> so they're so few and far between. We host workshops where we engage with the community members and actually teach them what it's like to have a clean river again and how they can determine the river health through using these tools and just checking what kind of organisms are in the river and you know which ones survive in better conditions and which ones will thrive in worse conditions and so on. So they get a better understanding of what they're actually de dealing with. We've done some water quality testing so that our claims can be backed by science. And this we've done through our partners and uh, we do regular testing of the water so as soon as there's anything suspicious we send it in for sampling and we get the results back and we make those public so that everybody is aware of the state of the water whenever there is an issue. So we have designed a one-of-a-kind first in the world litter catchment system. It's a multi multi-phased system consisting of three phases. Phase one is designed to catch large debris like big trees and logs and big pieces of plastic that come floating down the river and um, and then phase two is just a tighter grid so it's designed for the same thing anything that that passes through the first phase can get caught in the second phase and and it still catches trees so phase two also designed for the same thing just smaller grids and then the third phase is a barrel system so it is a row of barrels which has been anchored on the one side. Each barrel has got a grid underneath it which catches trash and the barrels float across the river and it's also uh, on a release system on the other side which when the water level reaches a certain height it just pops off and releases everything into the river so that we don't create damming. So we've had a project that we that we're running and it's called the Phyto Blitz project where we use plants to remediate. So first what we did was we took vetiver uh, grass and we placed pontoons 
in uh, both the cess male sprite and the henops river the um the henops is quite a it's quite a rough river and the water comes down with quite a speed so we had to use a different type of pontoon because we tried and uh, they just kept being damaged by the strength of the water um, what we'll do with these these plants is we will test the roots and the leaves to determine exactly what these plants are extracting from the water because they thrive on the toxins and uh, and then we can determine what role they can play in terms of actual E. coli removal, phosphate removal and all those other toxins which are in our water so that we can actually clean our water. And then we've also done a bank retention project where we planted 4,000 vetiver grass slips on a piece of the river which has been heavily eroded over time so that we can um, retain the banks and regenerate the soil in the area. And also this acts as a filter so as the water passes through the ground, through the roots, it also extracts the toxins from the water. So it is part of a cleaning process as well. So this is what it looks like when you undress a tree. It's probably one of the most rewarding feelings in the world when you can see the bark underneath tons and tons of plastic that's you know breathing again for the first time in ages and uh, it really just leaves you with a really good feeling and you can see there's a high visual impact as well so aesthetically it's pleasing and um, you know on an emotional level you also feel a very satisfied feeling after you've undressed the tree so looking ahead what we'd like to do is implement managed responsible recycling points upstream which are incentive based so that people get an instant reward for handing in their recyclables People are already walking to the taxis to go to work and so on. So if they were to walk just a kilometre or so out of their way to hand in their recyclables for five rand airtime or whatever the, the incentive could be, it could be hygiene products, it could be basic food products. Um, it's important to have it incentive based because there needs to be an instant reward. Education is great, but it takes a long time and we need something that's drastic and something that's going to make it happen faster. So um, together with that we'd also like to do managed um, composting sites and vegetable gardens where people can come and hand in their organic food waste which we can then recompost and they can exchange that for food so they'll get free food for their waste. And then this will obviously minimize the amount of waste that's going into the waterways in the first place. We'd also like to continue with the water testing and biomonitoring. So monitoring the environment and the ecosystem to see what changes there are so that we can continually keep everybody up to date and ourselves be prepared for what might be cyclical. We'd like to move from a reactive approach to one that's more proactive and implementation of measures which can control, such as our litter traps, the amount of waste and the areas in which we have to clean to minimize that so that we can get more done at one place. And we're continually seeking new innovative, practical and cost-effective ways to heal the henops and its people. You can join the revolution. Your contribution might be in alignment with our needs. If you do feel that you have something to contribute which could be beneficial for both of us and the river, you can reach out on our social media platforms or on our website henoxrevival.co.za At the end of the day we don't have time, so I ask that you pause and reflect. The state of our rivers is a direct reflection of a huge amount of pain, a very broken system and a massive disconnection to ourselves as beings that are made up of mostly water. What we do to water, we do to ourselves. Be the change. Imagine the future if this is now. The future started long ago. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen to and watch the work that Henoch Revival is doing in our community.